This is the boys' 13-14, 800-yard freestyle relay. He won of two in lane number two, Pleasanton Seahawks. Lane three, Almaden. Lane four, DeAnza Cupertino. Lane five, Peak. And in lane number six at the top is Palo Alto. They are making some of those announcements in the background for High Point. And for the 11 and 12 boys, the title did belong to Maxime Rooney, followed by Benjamin Ho. Another showdown we've seen many times throughout the course of this meet, and we will see many more times to come. In second place with 41 points, Adam Jordan. We didn't see them in a showdown at all during this meet. Oh, you are right. A uh, hypothetical showdown between Maxime Rooney and and Benjamin Ho as they scratched events to avoid each other. So we will anxiously wait for the day that those boys go physically head to head. There we go. <laughs> Halfway through leg number one up there in lane six is Palo Alto, 54.99 for the leadoff leg. It'd almost be fun to do some fantasy swimming there for Maxime Rooney and Benjamin Ho. Make some predictions as to what would happen. Maxime Rooney is just a very, very tall boy. Does not look like he belongs in the 11 and 12 age group. And I think that's something that we've seen th for many of these swimmers. They don't appear to look their age in the water, outside of the water. Just a lot of fast swimming going on. That, that, um advantage levels out as they climb up those age groups a lot of the time but these 13 14 year old boys going at it it's two teams that are very familiar with each other the Pleasanton Seahawks down in lane number two and the Palo Alto Stanford Aquatics team up in lane number six it's going to be the Pleasanton Seahawks with the advantage after leg number one 154 eight for their leadoff Pasa out in a 150 excuse me 154 0 for Pleasanton, 154.8 actually belongs to the leadoff from Palo Alto. The second leg out to a great start as Pleasanton Seahawks in lane number two, who is now about a body length lead over Palo Alto up there in lane number six. Coming on strong in three is Almaden, who is moving into the second place position. Swimmers and coaches, if I can have your attention, there is no diving in the warm up and warm down pool. There is no diving. It is Great second leg here three. for Pleasanton, halfway through and establishing a pretty dominant lead at this point. But as we've seen multiple times throughout the course of this meet, anything can happen and often the leadership does. and often it does. The leadership position continuing to change. And right there in the middle of your pool is Deanza Cupertino. Good three-way tie going on for second place right now. Almaden, Deanza Cupertino, and Palo Alto up there at the top. But doing work down here in lane number two, it's the Pleasanton Seahawks. Again, we saw this tactic, I believe it was this age group even. Maybe one younger, but uh, the Pleasanton team often putting their two big horses at the front of the relay. And we'll find out what's going on here at the back end of this 800 freestyle relay. But these guys on the front end have really put the Pleasanton Seahawks out to a major lead. And the boys swimming third and fourth will have an advantage or at least a big cushion and some open water to work with here as they transition into the back half. And this is heat one of two, so eight more teams left to go. And once again, it is definitely possible for any of these teams to score in the top eight. We just have to compare some times. Deanza Cupertino with a very fast-looking suit there in lane number four. The stripes black and white, so he is off to a killer first leg there. Speaking of killer, I think the pasta exchange there almost resulted in one of the teammates jumping on the other one. We haven't Pasa seen that many times. Yeah, you don't see that kind of aggression a lot of times out of these relay exchanges, but you did see one up there in lane number six. I thought the Pasa swimmer might have got clipped, in fact. They might have touched feet there <laughs> on that exchange, and now their focus shifts towards trying to catch up with these Pleasanton boys down in lane number two, and Daka has taken over that second-place position and are leading the charge trying to catch up with the Pleasanton Seahawks down in lane number two. Yeah, I think something we've seen throughout the course of this meet is safe relay exchanges. Safe, I use very loosely, but um, we don't. We haven't. I don't think we've seen any disqualifications for too quick of relay takeovers. 
Yeah, I think oftentimes that the two swimmers actually share a conversation before they actually switch turns. Hey, I, I just touched right there. Oh, did you touch yet? Yeah, how'd I touched. How'd it feel? Oh, it, was, okay? it was okay. I better go now. I got to swim <laughs> this third leg here. I'll talk to you later. Well, we got a good race there going on for second. Look up there at the top of your screen in four. That's De Anza. And right above them is Peak, who is trying to move into the second place position. The anchor boys getting prepared to enter the water. 50 yards left to go here for leg number three. It's anchor man. Another Ron Burgundy quote. Uh. But we've seen some good anchor <laughs> women here, so we won't go for that full quote. Nevertheless, it is anchor time, and it's going to be the anchor leg from Palo, excuse me, from the Pleasanton Seahawks entering first down in lane number two. And it is going to come down to the anchor man here in Peak and De Anza with a great relay exchange was De Anza to enter the water first, even though those boys touched pretty dead on two tenths of a second. And that just goes to show how important the exchange is. But... Peak is responding with some fast swimming. Although he entered the water behind, he was the first to flip at the 25. And he's now about a body length lead over De Anza in lane number four. And here they come as they approach the leaders, Pleasanton. It looks like Peak is carrying some speed here. And that lead going away very quickly for Pleasanton is now the Peak anchor is on the move. Peak looks like they might be about to catch... Pleasanton there in lane number two and just about a 25 here. I think we're about to be halfway through the anchor leg and we're going to see a change in leadership position in da -na, just about a da few na, seconds here. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na, <laughs> and there it is. We have the exchange up there in lane number five. Peak. It's it is Peak making the move and Pleasanton, just like we saw them do a couple nights ago on the 400 freestyle relay, stacking the front half of the relay and uh, now watching as some of the other teams in the center of the pool pass them by here on the back half. 50 yards left to go. Pleasanton trying to hold off those two boys above him, trying to move into the second place position. Palo Alto up in six. Deanza Cupertino in the middle of the pool. Heat number one, the touch is definitely going to go to peak in lane number five but we might have a new second place transition here as De Anza is very close to catching the Pleasanton Seahawks in lane number two. There's no doubt about this one though the peak team under the flags and their anchor will get into the wall touching with the time of 745 49. And we will write down that time and see how it compares to the top eight still left to swim. Coming in second in lane number four is De Anza with a 7.55, excuse me, 7.52.10. And coming in third is the Pleasanton Seahawks, 7.52.86.